guys, how's it hanging? Welcome back. I'm Lacey and this is The Arthas. Now, for those who were around, I created a video that looked at photo transfers and how you can do the process yourself. Now, what I did say I was going to do is I was going to show you how I apply that technique and incorporate it into my own projects. Now, if you haven't seen that video and you want to learn how to do that, on this side here I shall link how you can do the photo transfer process yourself and this video will hopefully give you some inspiration on how you can create your own projects yourself. If you are very much interested in this process and how I incorporate this technique, stick around and hopefully you feel very much inspired. So right in front of us guys there's a whole bunch of things that you're going to need for this project. So what I've got here is a ruler for measurements, I've got my flat smooth paintbrush so my Mod Podge gets put on nice and evenly and the Mod Podge I've gone for was a matte, I've gone for matte because I don't like any reflections especially if I'm hanging something like this on the wall where if you use gloss Mod Podge that's when you're going to get so many reflections and it's just going to be a lot harder to see your image from afar. So these are the three images that I've chosen for this project. So remember when you're printing out your images guys, it needs to be with a laser printer and you need to make sure that you reverse your photos so when you do put them onto your wood and your transfer, they are the right way around. The wood for this project that I've gone for is timber. So I've cut them at 13 centimeters by 15 centimeters, which should be a nice size for the photos that I've printed out. Here we have a huge roll of McCrame cord. So I've gone with the color beige. So the thickness of this is at four millimeters and I'm wanting to wrap this around the edges of the timber after I've finished with my photo transfers. I then bought a packet of eyelet screws. So I've gone with 15 millimeter as I think that these are the perfect size. I didn't want to go with anything too big. There's 25 pieces in a pack, but I'm probably only gonna need just a few. Next I have a long piece of chain here so I've gone with something that has a bit of a bronzy old school look to it so that's just going to bring everything all together and hopefully looks really good when I assemble it all. Okay so I'm starting off with my first piece of timber and my first image that I am going to put on it with the photo transfer process. So right now I'm just grabbing the Mod Podge and I'm needing to now cover this whole image with a layer of Mod Podge. So when I'm applying this, I make sure that I get a generous amount. I mean, if you feel like you don't have enough, you can always keep going back for more and just getting a nice good coat, make sure it's nice and even as well. So the reason why I put this much on is so that when it dries, I don't have to worry about accidentally taking off the image. If there's like an area that has a thin amount of Mod Podge, what happens is you accidentally can scrape off that image. I mean, that's not a bad thing if you're going for like a real distressed vintage look, but in this case, not what I'm going for. Okay, so now I've done that, I just need to grab this and I'm just gonna place it in the center of this piece of timber. So I'm just gonna be very careful with this because I don't wanna accidentally rip it as it's quite fragile at the moment. Once I've kind of sorted out where I'm wanting to put it, I then grab a ruler and what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of pressing it down a little bit softly and making sure that the Mod Podge is in all of the areas. Don't worry if sometimes you get a little bit of Mod Podge coming out the sides, you can just wipe that up with your finger or a damp cloth. Okay, so I finished my first image, so that's now all nice and snug on the timber. So now I just need to go finish the other two, hopefully it won't be a moment.
the photo transfer is all complete. Now for the fun part, waiting literally for Mod Podge to dry. It's finally the next day. So now I'm gonna get rid of the paper. So I've got a little spray bottle here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna saturate the paper that's been dried into the timber. So I'm just gonna to have to wait for a little moment for this to fully soak in. Once this is all soaked in, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rub the paper off and then hopefully that will leave behind the photo. So now my photos are finally wet enough for me to rub off. So when you're doing this, you can use either a sponge or your finger. So with this, just put a little of pressure, don't put too much. Uh, reason being is you can actually take your image off. So just a little bit of pressure and your paper should just slowly come off, leaving your image behind. First photo is completely done, now I just need to do the other two. So the transfer process is finally finished. It is quick to do, but the only thing that takes the longest is probably the drying time. So another thing guys, if you find you've still got little bits of paper left on your transfer, what you can do is just quickly go over with a spray bottle or a damp sponge and just rub over your images and that should just take over any remnants of paper that is left. So now that I'm happy with how these are looking, I'm just gonna set everything in with my best friend Mod Podge here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a nice layer, making sure that I've covered the whole thing and that these bad boys are going to last for quite some time. So this is probably gonna take a little bit of time making sure I've done this properly, so it won't be a moment.
yay, my Mod Podge is finally dried so I can move on to the next step. So this step is more about decoration and just making it look more appeasing to the eye. So what I've got now is I've got my McCrame cord and badge and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a hot glue gun so I can stick that around the sides. Now you can use whatever glue you like. I just go straight with a hot glue gun because it sets straight away. The only con about this is it burns when you get on your fingers. So I guess that's a perk of having long nails at the moment. So this will take some time. So I'm just going to fast forward through the process and show you how the product looks at the end of this. Okay, so now the decoration of my crane cord is completed. So I'm really happy with how these turned out. These are looking amazing at the moment. So I'm quite happy with the photos I've chosen too. So the next part now guys is the assemblage, putting it all together. 
So now what I'm doing is with my ruler, I am measuring three centimeters in and I'm just marking whereabouts I think the center of the thickness of the timber is. So I need to do this on each side and make sure that I've got two points where I want to drill my holes. So for the drill, I have gotten a 15 millimeter as well. So of course, so these will fit perfectly when I need to screw in the eyelet screws. Now, the reason why the eyelet screws are going here is because that is where I plan on attaching the chain when it comes to getting them hanging. So this is gonna take some time, so I'm just gonna fast forward through this and see you soon. So now that I've marked where all the holes are going to go, I'm now going to get the drill and I've just inserted the 15 millimeter piece and now I just need to drill holes into each of these areas I've marked out. From there I'm going to put my eyelet screws in, so what I need to do is take about 10 of those screws and just kind of screw them into where they need to go. So now I've got my chain and I'm just going to measure about 
10 loops down so I think I'm probably gonna need about four of these and what I end up doing is I'll end up opening the ends of each part and then attaching it to the eyelet screw that I have screwed in at the bottom of the top of these so now I'm just arranging how I want things to go and then I'll continue with the process of chaining up my photos So for the top of my first photo, I didn't exactly know how long I wanted it to be. So I just kind of estimated how long I think it should be. And now I'm just attaching that to the top of my first photo, which is of my cat, Figuera. So I've finally completed my project using the photo transfer method. So this is a really fun project to do guys. It's a really good gift idea as well for friends and loved ones. Didn't know it'll cost that much to do, so I'm probably looking around $20 or so, and I still have some leftover material. So this is just one idea of how you can use the photo transfer methods. This one now is just hanging in my home for me and my partner, so we can look at our cool photos that we've taken. Okay guys, so that was my DIY project and how I use photo transfers. If you'd like to see more ways of how you can use photo transfers or just need some more inspiration, please comment down below and I can actually make a video about it. Anyway, if you guys loved this video and found it helpful in any way, please click that like button, don't forget to subscribe and also turn on that notifications button so you can see more content from me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you another time, bye!